Okay, so now we're going to move on to something pretty neat, which is different from what we just did. Um, and this is really where ray tracers show their stuff. So we're going to look at a curved surface, which is a sphere. And it's very difficult to deal with curved surfaces in real-time rendering, so that's really where ray tracers can shine. I'll use that pun many times, by the way. So the ray tracer is going to shine with spheres. Okay. So to specify a sphere, you need two pieces of information. One of them is the center, which is a vector. So it's the location in 3D. I'm going to draw my pictures in 2D, but, but the same principles apply in 3D. And the other piece of information you need is the radius. So how big the sphere is. So what you have to satisfy if, is if you're a point on the sphere, it has to be the case that the distance between the center of the sphere and your point is equal to the radius. So you have to satisfy the implicit equation P minus C magnitude equals R. So I'm, I'm a little sloppy with the arrows here, but vector P minus vector C magnitude of that vector is equal to R. So that's just saying the distance between P and C is the radius. So all the points that satisfy that are going to be the points on the circle. So I pick another point over here. That should be the case that that P minus C magnitude is also R. And you can see in three dimensions, that's also the case. So I can go, you know, let's say that R was my finger length here, and I fixed my center here. Then any direction I go, I will touch a point on the surface of the sphere. Okay, but in 2D, you can just do this by take, taking a pencil, putting it flat down on your piece of paper, taking a string, and then going around. So that's exactly what a compass does. Okay, so we've just defined what a compass does in 2D, and then some kind of 3D version of that in 3D. Okay. But I actually want to write this a little bit differently because it's going to be more convenient. So let me instead, remember, we don't always love square roots, right? They can sometimes make things a pain for us. So what I'm going to say is, well, let me square both sides. So the magnitude squared of, of this difference, so the distance squared between P and C should be equal to the radius squared. Okay, well, now I can, I can use this kind of neat identity, which is, well, I can write that as P minus C dot product of P minus C is equal to the radius squared. So remember, the dot product of a vector with itself is actually the magnitude of that vector squared. If you think back to your dot product identity, dot product of u and v is magnitude of u times magnitude of v times cosine of the angle. Well, the angle between a vector and itself is zero, and u is equal to v, so you just get u squared magnitude. Okay, this is very nice. Now, we want to know, what, well, what's the intersection of a ray with a sphere? So let me draw a little picture over here. So I'm going to start with that parametric form of the ray again. And the picture that we're interested in is something like this, where we start with a ray. And that ray is going to hit the sphere. Now, one thing you already noticed that makes this a little different is it's possible that the ray actually intersects the sphere in multiple places. So we're going to see how this comes out of the map. But I just wanted us to get set up again. So we're going to do a similar thing, though, to what we did with the plane. And we're just going to substitute in for the point that we're trying to satisfy the parametric equation for the ray. So I'm going to start with this equation here. But I'm just going to substitute in the ray. So what I, what I have is P0 plus TV minus C dot P0 plus TV minus C is equal to R squared. OK, so, so I don't drive myself completely nuts writing things over and over again. Let me actually, for this derivation, let me say that for a moment that W equals P0 minus C. So I can just rewrite this equation as W plus TV dot W plus TV equals r squared. Okay, now what we can do is actually FOIL. Okay, so, so this is a FOIL scenario. And we can FOIL with vectors just the same way, vector dot products just the same way that we can FOIL with, 
with any product of two linear things here. So what I write is, well, this ends up being w dot w plus 2t w dot v plus t squared v dot v is equal to r squared. You see it? So you either do or you don't remember how to FOIL, but this should look kind of familiar. Okay. Uh, let me just rearrange this a bit. I'm actually going to turn this into a canonical form here. And I'm going to write um, v dot v t squared plus um, 2w dot v times t plus w dot w minus r squared is equal to zero. Okay. So here is the equation that we have to solve. I started with this and I rearranged it and I have to solve this. Well, now you're going to remember that we have this wonderful formula called the quadratic formula. Actually, it's super ugly, but <laughs> um, if we have an equation of the form a t squared plus b t plus c is equal to zero, if we have it in that canonical form, um, then we can actually write that t is equal to negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. All right. So we're using the quadratic formula to figure, figure out what the intersections are. So here you go. The quadratic formula is actually useful. <laughs> so, I mean, it shows up everywhere, but here's, here's a nice concrete example. And we'll have some nice interpretations of what's actually going on with the quadratic formula that are visual here. And so that's kind of neat. But let me scroll over here and just, just okay, so here's the derivation. See, it's not that bad, right? We just have to kind of slog through and we eventually get into this form. Um, but let's, let's kind of sit with this for a moment instead and say, okay, I went through all that trouble and what I ended up with was a quadratic equation where A is V dot V, where V is the direction vector. B is two times the quantity P0 minus C, so, so the vector um, from the center of the sphere to the right, dotted with the direction vector. And C is equal to that vector P0 minus C dotted with itself minus R squared. And if you do that, you'll have two solutions. So RA, we're, we're starting to see how this meshes with the picture, right? You have a negative B plus the square root of B squared minus 4AC over 2A, or negative B minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So that's how you end up with two solutions. Okay. Now pause again for a moment and try to think, well, where does this go wrong? So when can we get a solution that's undefined? So, so really, where is there no solution? So really pause the video and think about it. Look at this equation, think, where does it go wrong? Okay, so one thing is, well, we, we should look at the denominator again, right? Well, the denominator is v dot v. That's not going to be zero unless we have a degenerate ray. So as long as v is a non-zero vector, as long as the direction vector for the ray is non-zero, we're okay. But actually, one thing we do have to worry about is the so-called discriminant. So if b squared minus 4ac is less than zero, so I'll call this special case one, if if the discriminant b squared minus 4ac is less than zero, then we're in trouble because we're going to be trying to take the square root of a negative number. And so we won't actually have a solution. There is no, there is no real square root of a negative number. So what's going on here geometrically, actually, let's look at it. That's like saying, okay, here's my sphere um, and here's my ray. Oops. Just wanted a solid point there. So there's my sphere, and then here's my ray. So notice how that ray is never going to intersect that sphere, right? It just goes right straight past. Um, and that's actually a pretty common case in ray tracing. Most of your rays are not going to hit a sphere that's out there unless it's a humongous sphere that takes up your whole thing. So, so this is a case where the ray just doesn't hit the sphere at all. Um, and actually, in fact, the lines, not even, even if I ignore even if I let t be less than zero, the line won't ever hit it either. 
Okay, so that's the first special case. So let me write that down. So it's so it's that even the line never hits the sphere. So you have to check for that. Okay, but let's say that you were able to find um, a non-zero or, or a non-negative discriminant so that you do have solutions here. So I'm trying to let it, let me scroll over here. Okay, there we go. So let's see, let's say that, okay, you do have a non-zero discriminant, but let's look at both solutions. So let's say that, so another special case is both roots, so both solutions are less than zero. Remember, we had to worry about this before with, with the plane. Are we actually behind the plane? And so the same thing can happen with the sphere. It's possible that I have a ray that is just going the exact wrong direction. So this is never going to hit the sphere in the forward direction, although it may actually have two roots in the backward direction. They just both happen to be negative, right? So if t1 and t2 are both less than zero, then we actually don't hit the sphere, so be careful. That would be like going backwards, and we don't want to do that. Okay, but there's actually another few things that can happen. So, so we're not finished the story yet. So we kind of this is these were all the only two special cases we had to worry about um, for rain or sec plane, but we actually have to worry about some other things too. So what if one solution is less than zero, but the other one is greater than or equal to zero. So take a moment and try to think geometrically, what, when would this happen? Okay, let's draw a picture. So what I'm looking for is a ray that has a positive root, so something in front of the ray but also something behind the ray. And that's actually going to be a ray that's on the inside of the sphere. If you're on the inside of the sphere, no matter what direction you're pointing, you're going to hit the sphere on the way out. And then if you go backwards, you're going to hit the sphere on the other side. So the actual solution that's positive will be here, and then the one that's negative will be here. Okay. So that's one thing that can happen. Okay, another thing that can happen is actually even a little weirder than this, which is it's possible, so I meant to write special case three there, but it's possible to have what's called a double root. So, so we'll call this double root. So that's the case where b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0. So when the discriminant is equal to 0, we're actually in a situation where we get, OK, the, one of the roots is negative b plus 0 over 2a. The other roots is negative b minus 0 over 2a. So they're actually the two solutions are the same. So that's a pretty weird place to be. But it says something very interesting geometrically. And again, I want you to pause and think about what this might be. So what is the ray doing when there's a double root? So this is the case where we start with a ray, and it actually glances the sphere. So it just barely hits the sphere at exactly one point. So this is a double root. And you'll see, you know, as I approach that scenario, let's say I have a ray that doesn't glance it, but it's close. When I zoom in, what I'm seeing is I have two points that are actually really close to each other. And the more I, I sort of get closer to glancing, the closer these two points will get until the two roots actually coincide. So this is where you see what a double root actually means in this geometric context. So I always thought this was super cool because you, you can talk about this algebraically, 
but this gives you a visual to see when it actually happens. So you have some, some weird special cases to consider with ray intersect sphere. So that's the last task on mini assignment one. And what I'm going to want you to do is return a list of points that are intersecting. And this list will have two elements if, if you're in you know, this scenario. It may, it may be empty, like in these two, or it may have just one element. So there's two ways to get it empty, and there's two ways to get a single solution. So anyway, now we're starting to get pretty interesting. And now we're actually halfway through the objects you need for the ray tracer. Um, we're actually two thirds of the way. The only other one that's going to be required is an axis aligned bounding box. And we'll get to it, but, but you can do a lot with just spheres and triangles. So that's cool. Um, some of the optional tasks on the ray tracer, I'll have you do a cylinder and a cone. And those are, those are also what are called quadric surfaces. They can have two solutions and they'll involve solutions to a quadratic equation. Um, so, in general, it kind of makes sense that a curved solution, a curved surface, should be able to have two solutions because, you know, I could go in and I can go out. And certainly there are, there are surfaces that have more than two solutions, right? If I have a solution that's not just quadratic, but actually cubic or even higher polynomial, um, I can hit this in many different places, right? So, but we're, we're not going to get quite that fancy here in our ray tracer, but... I just wanted to show you this interesting interplay between algebra and geometry here. All right, so that's it for that. And now we're going to, after you just do a couple exercises, we're going to move on to linear algebra. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs>